Nuclear missile ready. Nuclear missile ready.
Nuclear missile ready. What's up everybody, welcome to another show of Alpha Pro Series. Uh, today we have Zest versus Cure. At least we should do. <laughs> um, we might have a little bit of a delay here guys, I'm very much sorry for that one. But um, neither of the players yet are in the lobby. Um, mm, 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 mm. We do have contact with them apparently. So hopefully they will be here at any time. Anyway, we're going to give them uh, a couple more minutes before we actually get things started. Hope you don't mind. Sorry for the delay. Uh, but yeah, of course, we can't really have a pro series without the pros here. So it would be difficult, rather difficult. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll be right back with you to you with some uh, awesome games. All right.
Oops. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, we do have confirmation that both the players are on their way. Uh, Cure already is in uh, in StarCraft 2 with us. That's really nice. Zest, a little bit delayed here. I'm not quite sure what was happening there, but uh, he's on his way. So we, mm, I'm not sure how far he is. Oh, you know what? He's already here. That's perfect. All right. Let's get them both into the lobby. There we go. We can get, finally get things started here. Zest versus Cure. Cure versus Zest is the best uh, <laughs> that we can give you right here today. And that's what we are going to do. I don't think there's much better, honestly. Um, even if you imagine any other players here. Uh, Cure and Zest is pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. Anyway. Hello. Hello. Saying hi to the pro players here. And uh, they are both ready. So let's head things off with game number one. It will be on Eternal Empire. Um, pretty sure that rules already have been explained to them. I might have kind of should have probably sent something in the main chat as well. Let them know it's actually a best of nine. They've done this before though. They've been part of our series before. So it should be completely fine anyway. Um, yeah, game number one guys. Let's head on into this one. Loading up. Loading up. Back on the street. Let's see if Cure can make something happen here. It would be absolutely lovely, of course. Uh, Zest, Zest, a very terrifying opponent. Cure, though, as he said himself, he's a pretty solid Terran player. <laughs> it's, uh, it's his words, I believe, from the Home Story Cup. I'm not completely sure 100% what he exactly said, but something along those lines anyway. Oh, let me just fix the, uh, the in-game sound there for you guys as well. Lovely, lovely. All right, here we go in the... Yeah, they're all there. They're all there. In the top right side, we have the red Terran player. He's, um... He is Cure. He's, he's Cure, is he? Yeah, he is. In the bottom left side, we have his opponent for today. The blue Protoss. One of the best Protoss in the world. He is Zest. If not the best, of course, some people say. The famous little riddle that people love to uh, continuously talk about. Uh, that's a pylon here going down just outside of Cure's base. That's quite an early pylon to be placed over there. I'm kind of curious to see what will happen. There's already a gateway on the way, so... Hmm, what in the world is your plan here, Zest? Probably some people already know. It's another gateway, actually. All right, so Zest's going to ramp up the aggression here rather early on. And uh, we'll have to wait and see how Cure will respond to this early gateway shenanigans. The probe's still getting here at a regular kind of time. Nothing too crazy. Cure gonna see this? No, actually he doesn't. Oh, that probe coming back in to try and... Oh, yeah, yeah. Lure those SCVs away from the actual point where they will see this gateway. Oh my god, he just doesn't see it. Even with the creating of the command center here. Oh, that... Yeah, there we go. Okay, he finally saw it. Took him a while. I'm not even sure if he fully realized it uh, right now even. I mean... He knows about it, but he's not really reacting to it. You wouldn't really re expect the gateway there anyway, would you? Alright, there we go. There's finally the reaction taking place. Now, he hasn't obviously clicked on it yet, so uh, he is going to have to try and get close. Actually, no, he's just going to go for the counter with the Reaper. Moving to the main base of Zest. Zest does have the second gateway here, though, so you should be absolutely fine. I kind of like the uh, approach from Cure here, going with the Reaper across the map. Maybe do some counter damage and just try to be defensive if Zest is actually proxying gateways on his side of the map. Uh, unfortunately for him though, of course, yeah, the Reaper immediately being targeted down. That one isn't going to live for very much longer, or at least shouldn't. Does get killed off there. And uh, the Stalker here containing Cure quite heavily, so already three workers going down. And a Stalker as well, actually. One single Stalker has been picked off here at the front door of Cure, but the second one is already here. And uh, a Sentry is now on the way as well. 
It's going to make things very difficult. Two gateways and a robotics facility here now being constructed. A starport as well being proxied. Both of these players, uh, you know what? I'm, <laughs> I'm enjoying this one. Very, very aggressive here. A good way to open up a series. I mean, it is a best of nine. If you don't want to make uh, any type of real uh, gambles later on in the series, you might as well do it at the first game, right? Especially in the best of nine. You have a lot of games still to go if you don't manage to be successful with your cheesy committals. Here, you still will... Uh, well, you still have a lot of games to go. You still need to lose four more games before anything real bad happens. More Stalkers and uh, Zealot as well accompanying this hit squad now. Gonna, looks like, just ferry his way into the main base here. And that is outside of Cure's vision range, actually. He's not really noticing that there is, in fact, a robotics facility here on the left side. And, oh my dear lord. Right, another warp in. That's a lot of Protoss right on top of the ramp already. A Widowmine does get a reasonable connection, but every single SCV is going to have to be pulled here. Since there's only a Cyclone available right now. The Cyclone needs to get repaired as well. It is very low. The Widowmine getting the picks off there as well. In uh, Well, with a couple of those SCVs as well that were left behind. The Cyclone still not repaired here. The Banshee is going to make his way across the map. Uh, well, I say across the map. It's already kind of there, but you know what? He may very well need this at this home place right now. He's losing so many workers, but on the other hand, I mean, if he cleans this up... Uh, I'm not sure if he will, though. The Micro or Zest is pretty darn good. The Banshee is in this base here. He doesn't have Cloak almost available. There he goes, all right. So he needs to kill off a lot of probes, but Recall is just available, and that's going to bring the Observer back home and allow these stalkers to just shoot the uh, the Banshee here. There it is. So yeah, not as much damage, obviously, being taken there by Zest as Cure took. Cure, he did start a second uh, command center, but he never really finished it. Does have the Siege Tank now, though. That could be very valuable in these types of situations. But, uh, I mean, 17 workers versus 4 workers, that is, uh, that is a really rough situation. Look at that, that is just pathetic, right? That's less SCVs than you start with in uh, Wings of Liberty. And he's even sending one as a scout, it seems, so. Very brave here, bike here, but I'm not sure if this is going to be winnable. <laughs> Alright, there we go, he realizes GG is called Zest takes game number 1 in a very clean fashion. Aggressive yet effective. Alright. Game number two will be map choice for Cure. Um, let's see what map he picks, honestly. Maybe I shouldn't pick Eternal Empire. Maybe... Because, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if Zest is that aggressive on it right from the get-go. I'm not sure if he really looks forward to playing on that map. I just wanted to see the new maps. <laughs> that was my motivation completely there. Um, all right, let me see. Pro series. Loose choice map. Yep, cure map pick. He's going to go for Zen, a lovely map. There we go. Zen, <laughs> Zen Gardens being loaded up here. I would have pre ah. Zen, I don't know, it feels like you're just missing something in that name in a way. Right? Like Zen Quadrant, Zen Gardens, Zen... Anything, really, I think, I think would do well in this situation. Uh, but just Zen, I don't know, I feel like, compared to all the other ones, Ephemeron, like, they're long, drawn-out names that you can kind of, yeah, but maybe that is just makes it special in a way. I don't know who the tweet made, but it was kind of a funny tweet. It said, like, uh, whoever made Zen um, must be someone who loves fidget spinners, which is, <laughs> feels kind of true in a way. 
But you know what? We need some fidget spinners now and again in StarCraft 2. That's just the thing we need to keep things going. Uh, Zest needs a two-minute break, so that gives us a nice opportunity here to talk about one of our sponsors, actually. Um, let's talk about 24-hour fitness. And um, you know what? Show them that we appreciate their support that they give us to make events like these happen. 24-Hour uh, Fitness has 436 locations nationwide and memberships give you access to all locations. So you can uh, pretty much go wherever you want as soon as you have the uh, the membership. They're also in Europe, I believe. There's a couple of locations there. Um, not as plentiful, of course, as in the US overall. Um, Asian side? I don't know how many Asian 24-hour fitnesses there are, but if there are, I mean, go check them out, guys. They support esports, so we should support them as well. But, uh, yeah, you get a free fit plan as well, included with that membership. And uh, if you're looking to achieve your fitness goals, eh, come check out 24-hour fitness. You know, help yourself, help esports, help 24-hour fitness. That's the, uh, the overall motto of this stream right now. Um, okay, Zest is back as well. Uh, remember as well, we do have the um, the Metrorino page as well. It's just above the chat window. There's a little HTML link where if you go to it, you will be able to go for the uh, for the code. I think it's APS133 uh, right now. Something like that. Yeah, pretty sure. Anyway, if you type in that code, uh, contribute... Log in with whatever account you have available in your browser right now. You will just be able to add a little bit of extra dough to the prize pool here for these players. And, um, you know, show your appreciation. It doesn't take you much. It just takes a couple of clicks. And uh, that is it. And you will be able to um, support esports. Support StarCraft 2. So, yeah, here we go. Game number two. We will be seeing Mr. Cure here in the red. Bottom left, the Terran player. Uh, going for a cheeky little early SCV pool this time around. And his opponent in the top right, it is the blue Protoss player. He is Zest. Is he the best? Well, we're going to about to fight. I can't stop saying that. Why can't? It's just so nice. It rolls off the tongue. I've been programmed by all the other people that cast StarCraft 2 where they uh, talk about Zest continuously. And they continuously keep mentioning this as well. So it's just completely stuck in my head now. I can't stop. Also, by the way, I don't know if you if it's still going on. I think it kind of stopped, which is nice. But there is actually a little bit of construction work going on in the house next doors, apparently. Um, I got rudely awoken early on. But, um, you know, what? I think we're fine now, which is very nice. I kind of did some testing. It seemed like it wouldn't interfere too much with the audio levels. But, um, yeah, I'm just mentioning it. If you do hear it, then that is what it is. My apologies for that one. Anyway, uh, so far not much happening with this barracks over here. There is two refineries as well with three dudes on the gas mining happily away. So that will be definitely the Reaper attack here. Uh, in fact, he's going to go for a reactor as well, which is kind of interesting. So the Reapers, um, I imagine it's kind of... Coming here at the same time a regular barracks would. But then, oh my, okay, alright. I mean, a factory being put down as well. Is he going to try to make a star pulse as well? Is he just going to make four hellions here and then f fly them in? Is he going to go for widow mines? What in the world? He's still mining gas quite a lot, in fact. So, you know what? It, it, hmm. I'm going to keep my eye out, eye out on this one. We didn't really expect the Terran to be this aggressive early on either on the map like this, right? Especially because uh, I, I, it does seem to be a little bit of a new fav a ter Terran favored map here. More so than the other maps. Has a pretty solid third base that you can defend. A nice choke there. Uh, there's a lot of choke points with ramps everywhere that you can make use of. And, and choke points like these, right? Absolutely gorgeous for Terran players. Widow mines, siege tanks, you name it. It's going to be very effective in these situations. Attack Lab also going down. What in the world are we seeing here? A 1-1-1 one, one, one build with the Siege Tank. Is he just going to put a, a Medivac Siege Tank Marine push on this side of the map? Is this actually happening? Is this real life? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I still don't know. We'll have to wait and see. 
Is this gonna work as well, is my question. It would be crazy, man. I'm not sure if I've seen this before. I may have. I may have just forgotten about it, but, uh, alright, I mean... Very, very all in here. It's completely outside of Zestus vision range as well. But this, I feel like this is just going to be a place where people have to standardly go and scout because it is such a place that's asking for proxies, right? Every single time I've seen somebody proxy in this map, it's been right here. Every single time. Alright, there's the siege tank. The marines need to get on the high ground. They're still unloading though as the immortal and the depths are right on top of them. It's a little bit of a uh, troublesome landing so far for these marines. The second siege tank though does make his way into position as there is a SCV trying to build a bunker here now as well. A full-on siege happening. Medieval Warfare activated. Uh, two Immortals are out though. Three Stalkers need to target down this Immortal over here. The second Immortal jumping right on top of the tank needs to get focused. Fired by those Marines. Isn't getting killed off in time. The second Siege Tank falls and uh, you know what? This bunker not going to get completed either. Zest looks like he just holds. Even without scouting this at all and having a second base. Just happily probing away here. No problem at all whatsoever for Mr. Zest. And GG is called, alright, I mean, that was a little bit unfortunate, not being able to land those marines in safety, the uh, the pylon was already there, and uh, yeah, just not having the cover fire that he really needed for the siege tank there. Um, oh well, oh well, we're gonna have to go into game number three here, cure. Yeah, you see, a little bit of trouble, a little bit of trouble. Triton will be our next map pick. Let's take a look at Game Hearts. Oh. So we can have all our fancy graphics. Alright. So the third round, this time around, I mean Zest looking very dominant. Being dominant when he's the one aggressor and uh, holding off aggression. Very aggressive. Very, very... Uh, a peculiar build that I haven't seen that much yet, but uh, you know what? Zest, completely blindsided, absolutely fine, no problem at all whatsoever. He's just like, yeah, I got immortals, I got, I got stalkers. Uh, bring it, bring it, man! All right, here we go, game number three. Uh, we can hear the countdown now happening. Occurring in our ears. 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 <laughs> Absolutely lovely. Anyway, here we go. As we wait. We just wait. We just wait a little bit here. Bloop. Bloop. Score being updated as well. Live. There it is. Two to O. Oh. This guy in the top left, the red Terran, in a little kerfuffle now, needs to figure something out, wants to get the actual games going, but uh, so far, you know what, maybe stepping off his regular path of build orders, uh, and it's not working out that greatly so far. Anyway, he needs to figure something out here quickly, or else he's going to fall too far behind in this best of nine. He is the red Terran Cure. His opponent... Doing absolutely lovely. He is the blue Protoss. And the bottom right side. He is Zest. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So this is, so far is the, the most regular kind of thing that we've seen. But, I mean, Zest, he is... Okay, no, he's just scouting for proxies. He's just scouting for proxies. Not, he's not walking across the map just yet. Um, not even really going anywhere close to the Terran base so far. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so th finally it looks like we're going to have a very standard game here. And let's take a look at what will happen when both these players go for the 
macro openings here. The more greedy openings instead of the uh, the aggressive opening openings. It's a very early nexus as well. I guess he did scout that there's no proxies. Uh, although he didn't, I you know, he f just kind of forgot about this area to see. But uh, checking the other two. Two out of three. That is good enough for Zest. If he loses it because of a proxy that he didn't scout that's over here. You know what? That's just bad luck. <laughs> that's just bad luck. And uh, as we can see, it's not happening right now. So it's good luck. Which, uh, of course, we all wished him at the start of the game. Like proper gamer boys. Anyway. Uh, Adept and Reaper dance is going to take place here. The Reaper, actually. Right. You know what? He's giving, uh, giving the Adept a little bit of trouble here. Ooh, might get a second probe. Oh, that's so close. Yeah, right. Went back for it, but might get picked off because of it. No, actually. Just is Adept. Once again, kind of failing at uh, predicting the Reaper movements here. Ultimately, it does get taken out, but not after. It killed two probes and it did scout out that there is a Stargate on the way. Stargate tax, so we know that uh, Cure wants to make that Cyclone, wants to keep making those Marines here. And uh, potentially try to start building that Engineering Bay, although... You know what, if he already knows about it, and he's just going to keep making the maybe a second Cyclone and a Viking here as well, he should be absolutely fine. The two Adept Hit Squad, though, coming in. Want to see the lift on the Supply Depots, there it is, okay. And a good clean cancel as well. So let's see, Zest might try to get the Marines into the main base here with the Oracle, and then go into the Natural with the two Adepts. But, uh, no, actually, he's just going to go backwards here. Realize that he got scouted and not really investing too much into this. Uh, he's only made a single Oracle as well, then just kind of forewent any type of Oracle production, going for the Blink upgrade instead. Very, very decisive uh, decision-making here from Zest. Just quickly switching everything up, and as we can see, Cure still investing quite a bit into the air defense, making a second uh, Viking, a second uh, Cyclone as well. That's not the greatest thing, Vikings versus Stalkers. I suppose you can still kind of scout around with them. Two Vikings isn't going to make you lose the game in this situation against Stalkers, but uh, definitely would have been nice to have some other stuff available. Another Cyclone as well. A third Cyclone even being created now. He's just going to be aggressive with them instead. I think that's the right call. They might still be able to get something done with the low gateway force count uh, right now from Zest. As Zest did go for the early three base as well. After uh, not getting too much out of that Stargate. Ooh, that Viking's getting low. I don't want to send that one back home right now. Uh, no, actually staying here, right? Getting targeted down nicely. The Marines not really shooting here. Yeah, this isn't looking good for Cure at all. I think those Marines are going to get taken out. And second Cyclone shows up, though. A third one, I mean. Oh, it does kill off another Stalker. It's getting kind of close here, but ultimately, I mean, yeah. Maybe if he hadn't uh, spent that much money on the Vikings there, maybe gotten himself something else. He may have been able to take that one, but uh, unfortunately for him, getting duped by the Zest here. Getting uh, the curtain pulled over his eyes. And then magic tricked quickly into a different build order here by Zest. It's all right, nicely done. Just taking a little bit of shield damage and uh, a tiny bit of hull damage. You know what, it's on 69 HP. I'm pretty sure he did that one on purpose. Just He's just showboating now, guys. That's just what's happening right here. Plus one, plus one for both players started as well. Looks like both of them are looking forward to having uh, this go forward into the later parts of the game. Neither of them looking to close this one out very early on. Looks like, ooh, almost killing off two cycle or uh, two stalkers here. 
Cyclone also almost getting destroyed though. As we can see, 1 HP actually. Jeez Louise. It seems that Cure is actually a little bit reluctant to repair those Cyclones. Now, he still has a little bit of time, right? Okay, there we go. Jet, I previewed this game as well, uh, or at least the game number one. I'm not saying he definitely would have won that one if he had repaired the Cyclone, but it definitely would, was one of the tiny steps of Micro that I could have taken to try and make that more winnable for him in that situation. Um, anyway. Sest, Sest, he's just making pylons all over the map here. Look at that. Crazy. Three pylons on the right. One on the left here, and he's looking for a fourth base as well, I believe. He does have the money for it right now. Alright, and uh, we're waiting for it, but so far... Actually, he might wait all for a little bit because uh, Cure is moving out, and Zest is completely aware of this, of course. So instead, just warping in a couple more units, getting uh, the... Maybe the next round of upgrades? No, probably not the best choice here either. He just wants to spend everything he has on units right now. That's our auto zealots right here, ready to fight against the siege tanks who are not sieged up. There's also SCVs being pulled, but the SCVs aren't even here yet to buffer for this army. Not repairing the siege tank either once again. Only one siege tank remaining, but it's still quite a big badass ball of bio. But oh my god, more zealots rushing in from the left side does... Zest have enough to hold on here though. I'm not completely sure. The bio force is still here. 33 workers going down in this push, but it might not matter as Cure is running into the main base of Zest here. Zest making Archons. Archons are going to be a great buffer against the siege tank. Also, a great at dealing with those high marine counts. But a pretty nice pre split already coming out of Cure here. Trying to get all his forces in a good position. The siege tank as well. Absolutely detrimental that those stay up right now. More bunkers being constructed as marines and marauders are just coming across the map. There is a little bit of an, a force of the zest intercepting those reinforcements. He needs to do everything he can right now. And in he comes one last hurrah with the probes as well. Actually, he walked a little bit too far away from the siege tanks. And now he's not able to defend against this. Only 14 workers going down for Zest here. He did lose his second base, but overall, I mean, uh, whew. That is, uh, I, I guess, not that favorable. Still 20 workers only being killed here in total for Cure, as uh, opposed to the 41 workers. That's crazy. All right, I mean... Ah, it's a bit rough. <laughs> Oh, all right. I mean, yeah, I really do feel like you're a little bit went too far too quickly uh, away from the siege tank. Wasn't able to really defend them anymore. If he was able to keep the, uh, like, I believe it really was just a couple of zealots and a, maybe an archon. If he was able to keep those away from the siege tanks, he always would have had some place to run back to with his uh, marine marauder forces and try to get healed up a little bit here by the, uh, the medevacs. Now, this is an alright move. Doesn't want to lose this, though. That would be absolutely devastating. All right, does manage to move away, but we are looking for an interception here, potentially from Zest. He's going for it. Looking for that possibility. Cure already anticipating this, though. Unloading his bioforces, trying to run away from this, but uh, alright, there we go. Trying to confuse Zest here and try to kill off as many stocks as he can. Using these forces, all right, yeah, down goes that little medevac. The poor little fella didn't stand a chance. Well, it was a good effort, though. Kind of juking uh, away for a little while and then committing later on. Round number two coming in here. Does Zest still have enough? Did he overcommit to rebuilding his bases? I don't know. He does have Storm available here. There's four ghosts or uh, four, <laughs> four High Templar. Ready to rain fury down upon these bio forces. More widow mines are being placed down in pretty reasonable positions here. Oh, needs to be careful though. This is going to be very dangerous. Yeah, needs to sacrifice a couple of uh, marines into that zealot force. And yeah, Zest is just going to absolutely demolish this. 
No problem whatsoever. I wouldn't be surprised to see a GG coming out of there pretty soon. Actually, one Archon at the bottom still. You know what? I Templar did die here, but mm, I'm, more units are being wiped in. Stalkers, actually. Bioforce is low on HP as well, so needs to heal up here as much as possible. The longer this keeps going, the better it is for Zest, of course, with the uh, the superior work account. And uh, Kyo realizes that he probably isn't going to break Zest that way at the front door. So trying to rotate around, get some other position. Oh, actually he expected a, uh, a fourth base here. Already being constructed, but uh, yeah, Zest hasn't, hasn't really done that yet. Might give Kyo a little bit of a confidence boost. He's trying to set up here. The Medivex are completely out of energy. One more joining in, though, luckily. Needs to burrow these Widow Mines. Clearly, there's no Zealots here whatsoever trying to push in. Interesting type of siege position here for Cure, as he's going to attempt to drop into the main base, but I would expect Zest to be aware of this. Maybe Zest expected Cure to be aware of that as well. Didn't really go for that defense anymore. And uh, look at that. A pretty reasonable position. Widow Mines. Ah, I don't know. Could have been better. And the Storms do manage to connect quite nicely. Second attack though. Coming in for that third base. Are they able to withstand against these Zealots? Not like going back over the Widow Mines here unfortunately. Killing off the Observer though. That's nice. To make it a little bit more difficult here for Zest, I suppose, to watch out for those Widow Mines, but... Ah. Yeah, Zest is looking very dominant so far. I like the multi pronged harassment right here. Cure kind of has been able to try and, you know what, been able to uh, get himself nearer the same amount of workers as Zest is. But, uh, yeah, Zest has just been mining for so much longer on that high count of workers. I guess he did lose the third base, right? So that was also another thing that, as we can see, yeah, has quite a significant amount of minerals that is continuously just pumping into the, uh, the, uh, the treasury of Zest here. So he's getting ready to get those robotics bay units out as well. You have to remember that Cure kind of started this all off with quite a while ago by attempting a big massive attack with uh, 33 of his workers going down. There's so many pylons still on the map as well. It's crazy. Instead of observers, why not use pylons? They don't take up supply. Alright, this is a nice move. Getting the cancel on that fourth base. That definitely would have uh, brought Zest even further ahead, obviously. Ooh, nice pick up there with the I Templar before the uh, the Widowmine hits. And oh, oh, unlucky. A nice blink away from the uh, the one Widowmine, but blinking into another one. Fortunately, that happened to an end. Actually, Cure taking the opportunity to jump on top of those little bit weakened Stalker forces and actually. He's coming in with a flanking force as well, right on top of a Colossi. That will not be able to be picked up. All the High Templar here as well are in trouble. That's a lot of AoE damage, but I mean, all of it did go down. That's a lot of high tax units being traded for the bio there. And uh, Ghost EMP is now on the way. You know what? Kyu is definitely still making this a match. That was a very nice maneuver here. So let's take a look at the overall unit lost count. Uh, Zest is slightly bit behind, but we have to remember. I guess the, the gas is very important here, but... Um, yeah, 41 workers lost versus 26. That's the big difference here, which puts Zest in such a really nice position. I'm surprised that he, uh, he hasn't been able to really take it further away than that he has. Losing that third, uh, second base really put a number on him. It appears... Hmm. Right, 
Kier coming in again with a flanking force. And it looks like, actually, Zest going to be a little bit unlucky here. Moving his army out of position just as this force is coming in. Uh, he's just going to commit to it, though. He's just going to try to take out this base. It's actually the main base of Kier that has been flown over from the main a little bit unlucky. Nice storms on top of that bio. Needs to have those EMPs land on the... Well, most of the uh, Protoss units here, of course. Yeah, not too bad, but uh, that base obviously still going to go down. This base as well. But uh, it's less detrimental for Zest, I believe, to lose that base now. Cure. Oh my god, he lost 29 workers again. 29! 70 works in total killed off so far. Oh my god, 2 HP on the War Prism with 4 High Templar in it. Marines, focus! <laughs> focus the, yeah, the War Prism here. One good volley of those Vikings might be able to put an end to this uh, War Prism Micro, and then it's going to be easier for Cure to get the EMP on top of those High Templar, of course. Is he going to be able to do it? A good concave here. Uh. Let me try to force the stim out of uh, Cure there. Get him to waste more Medivac um, energy, which he really doesn't have in full supply. As we can see, most of those forces still in the yellow right now. And Zest is coming in with a couple of scouting zealots as well. Seeing there's nothing there yet. Just uh, letting them be. Letting them stay. Upgrade wise, uh, we're getting even to that as well again. Which is nice, of course, for Cure. He actually moved his second base now over as well, flying that one to the fourth flood base location. Look at this, he only has four mineral crystals remaining here. I suppose Zest also only has four, but. Um, hmm. This is a very scrappy game all of a sudden, isn't it? Ooh, nice pick off on the Viking. Let's lose the Stalker for it, though. But uh, yeah, Zest is in a little bit more of a aggressive position here, I'd say. A more likely position that he is going to be able to re-confirm uh, the kill on this fourth base. Although Kjur realizes that this is the most crucial part of his uh, strategy right now. Needs to keep this base alive. So he's staying in this overall area here. Another medevac being picked off here. Zest absolutely relentless with this blink stalkers. Poking and prodding at every little inch of Terran here. But, uh, you know what? We've been seeing a nice little bit of control coming out of Cure so far as well. Using those ghosts. Ooh, this could be a big flank from Zest. No, actually, it's just stalkers again. Trying to take out reinforcements. Crazy. Crazy. Absolutely bonkers. Um, again, though, still a little bit in favor for Cure as the trading goes, miraculously. Killing off the Observer there. That's going to make it a lot more difficult, of course, for Zest to uh, use those Blink Stalkers in that aggressive way. Uh, nothing there anymore. Rocks being targeted down might give Cure a nicer uh, little bit of uh, mobility here. Look at that. Just continuously with those Blink Stalkers. Killing off another ghost. Killed off a Marauder there as well. Absolutely lovely. Getting a couple of Zealots here as well. Oh my god, a big fight. Just as I look away for a second, this suddenly happens. The entirety of the Bio Forces rolling down right on top of the Protoss Forces here. Can it be enough? I think, you know what, Kjur might have it, but oh my god. His Bio Forces are so extremely low. Needs to target down the final bit of High Templars here. Uh, the Stalkers as well, though. They are quite a pain still. And it's just because these Medivacs are so low HP, they were not able to keep the Bio Forces alive here. Or I say low, low energy. That's absolutely crazy. That could have gone both ways if those uh, Medivacs, I feel like, had a little bit more energy. Maybe one EMP hitting a little bit less fortunate for uh, for Zest. Or maybe a, a Storm not hitting as many Bioforces there. Definitely could have changed the outcome of that battle. Didn't though. <laughs> Zest being dominant once again here. 
But the base still lives. 18 workers did get picked off though. Oh my god, Kyo would absolutely love to kill off these High Templar, but they still have so much Storm remaining. Needs to be careful. Oh my god, they're so low. All these Marauders. And that might be it, actually. It might be... She's Louise. All right, maybe... What's still coming in? Still more Bio Forces. We're pretty far away from any reinforcement point for Zest, but it doesn't matter. Zest is victorious. Once again, we're going into a 3-0 lead right now. Four zests. Even, uh, you know what? When he's aggressive, he wins. When he's being aggressed upon, he wins. And uh, when there's a macro game, he kind of wins too. Uh, I suppose, you know what? We did have the all-in with uh, the SUV pool uh, there. Somewhere in the middle. But uh, yeah, a little bit unfortunate. Anyway, guys, remember that uh, these types of events, they would not be possible without uh, sponsors such as GameStop. Uh, GameStop is uh, working with Macherino to fuel the grassroots of competitive gaming. So if you want to help out uh, StarCraft 2 scene or any other type of competitive gaming type of scene, you can have a look on their website, GameStop.com slash esports, for what type of they are hosting there. Uh, there are all sorts of amateur tournaments and uh, you will be able to get that rolling. Uh, yeah, see what you're made of, test your metal. And um, it's absolutely for free. You don't have to pay a dime to join their tournaments. So that is very nice as well. Making sure that esports uh, has a, you know what, nice starting off point there for a lot of titles. So go have a look at that one, guys. GameStop.com slash esports. Thank you very much. <laughs> also, remember, Maturino is a thing. We do have the codes available. Uh, if we all help out with the code, it's going to help out the prize pool quite a bit. And uh, things will be much better for everyone, of course. All right, Kyo is ready to go. Zest. Waiting for the go sign of Zest. Uh, good luck, good luck. Have fun, have fun. Here we go. Next round. Next round. Should I tell you what map it is? Did I already tell you what map it is? I forgot. I don't think I did. I think I was just bambling on about that. Uh, the sponsors, right? Right. I was doing advertisements. So we're going to keep it a secret here for a little bit. Maybe some people, uh, some keen eyes already spotted it. Uh, I, can't really, I can't really hide it now, can I? Uh, maybe if I go into the pre-roll screen. But you know what? I don't think that would be worth it. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. Game number four. Already, three points on the board for this man right here. Oh, I keep pressing the wrong button. There we go. He is the red Protoss player in the bottom left side. Just needs two more wins, actually, to take the clean sweep against Cure. He is Zest. What an absolute beast. In the top right, we have a... Uh, you know what? Again, once more. Going for the... Kind of aggressive play here. In the top right, we have the blue Terran player. He is Cure. Proxy Barracks. My, oh my. And, uh, you know, this probe doesn't look like he will scout it. Nope, nope. Doesn't scout it yet. He's going to see this single SCV here moving across the map. A little bit of a weird adjustment there, maybe. I don't know if he spotted that, but you could clearly see the SCV going for the left and then deciding to go as far away from the left uh, spot here as possible. I don't know if that's something Zest will pick up on. Definitely felt a little bit off. There's no reason really to have your SCV maneuver like that if you're just going to go for the scout with that SCV. And, uh, yeah, Zest is going to realize that there is no SCV coming into his base. But he's still going to just plop down that expansion, actually. Mm. Even with seeing that there's no barracks whatsoever in the main base of Cure here. That's going to be a little bit scary, I'd say, for Zest. Maybe he's feeling a little bit sorry for his opponents. Maybe he's... Uh, there's no gas guys are taken as well. So that's another sign here from Zest what's coming his way, right? That must mean it's Marines. There's not much else that can be uh, made by just using the minerals. I don't think there's anything actually. 
You could just build bunkers, I suppose, but uh, you still need the marines to make those useful. Alright, in come the bunkers. Uh, would love to see a second bunker make a little bit of a choke area here for Zest to jump into. So his probes will have a harder time to really help out with this situation. And Cure actually targeting down the cybernetic school so far. Uh, maybe because he didn't want to overextend going into that pylon range, but... Uh, you know what, so far I'm kind of liking the overall micro from Zest. He is going to take out two SCVs here. Shield batteries being plopped down the... Alright, there we go. If this gets targeted down, the pylon needs to be destroyed here. Stop that other stalker from coming out. All the SCVs having been pulled as well. That's a lot of marines still remaining. Let's take a look. Six marines still on the field. Only a single stalker here. And that is going to be it. GG is called Cure. Managing to get himself on the board. What a cheeky play. I'm not sure if Zest... I'm not, I'm not sure if that was the right response from Zest. <laughs> Still going for the Nexus there. Um, other than that, I suppose... The shield batteries weren't there really in time. And again, I'm not sure how quickly the, uh, the cybernetic score was created either. So Zest is going to be able to pick his first map of the series here. Let me leave the arcade again before I completely miss the uh, the message. Wow, alright, that's nice. It's always nice to not have a clean sweep. Even if it is just a, a proxy 3 racks. <laughs> Maybe Zest just wasn't expecting the 3 racks. That could be it, right? Just expecting like a 2 racks or... Even a proxy... Nah, I suppose proxy 2 racks would be the, the thing. Um... Let's see, Zest map pick. Let's get him ready to pick the map that he wants. And uh, we'll hop into, into game number five. Out of his best of nine. Uh, wait, no, game number four. Game number four, sorry. No, wait, that was game number four. This is game number five. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, game number five. It is game number five. Ephemeron. Alright. Here we go. Ephemeron will be the choice for Zest. We are gonna have to get both of these players in here. Alright. Alright. Alrighty dighty. Let's see what we can make happen for these players here. Um, GG. Go, go. It is called back here. Good luck, good luck. Have fun, have fun. I'm still waiting for Zest. I don't, I don't click start until both players are ready to go. Itching. Itching to go. You know, just in case they got distracted by something. GG, good luck, okay. Good luck, good luck, have fun, have fun. Oh, my dear lord. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Game number five. I did the math in my head, and I realized that three plus one is four, so that would mean this is game number five, because after four it comes five, if the math checks out, but I'm pretty sure it does. Professor Kozan is on the job here. No problem, guys. I got this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here we go. It is 3-1 to one right now for this guy in his favor. Quite heavily so still. In the bottom right side, we have the red Protoss player. He is known as the best. He is Zest. And, uh, well, well, well. Look at who it is. It's, uh... It's Billy the SCV coming across the map once again. Trying to be the cheeky little boy that he is. Anyway, let's introduce his master. The SCV slave driver. He is the blue Terran in the top left side. He is Cure. I don't know why I called him the SCV slave driver. Maybe because he's forcing all his SCVs to run across the map right from the get-go. 
There is the first barracks being plopped down. Zest is looking around, and you know what? You know what? Ah, look, oh, yep, there it is. Okay, there's the scout seeing this. Beautifully scouted there by Zest. Pretty sure nothing being proxied here. Could have gone unnoticed. And that probe should be able to attack the SCV, right? Don't tell me he cannot attack that SCV. Is that for real? He can't. Uh, what? In the, what? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Is that a thing? He can't. He couldn't attack it there. What in the world? All right. I guess uh, you know what the, the Reaper is still gonna get here quite early on. A zealot has to be created here because the cybernetic school not gonna be done in time. Obviously, that's gonna be a very very quick Reaper. Might be able to get some damage done behind this though. Uh, you know what? Cure is still doing pretty normal. Well, more normal things than he did in the uh, the other time around when he made the barracks, the factory, and the starport all at the same place. Not something I was used to. Uh, anyway, look at that. The Reaper doesn't want to get hit by the Zealot, obviously. It would be a little bit of a shame of his HP pool here. Although he does regenerate, so it should be okay. All right. And the Zealot kind of just taxes the Reaper here. More uh, micro is going to be required. Of course, also, it's going to be harder for the Reaper to kind of chase down any type of low HP probes. And actually, the Stalker's out now. And uh, not a single probe has gone down yet whatsoever the reaper trying his best to micro against this but you know what it looks like yep that's a dead reaper that's a dead reaper nothing you can do mate only getting a single kill a single a singular kill here only taking place that's crazy very well played here by zest Beautifully microed with those probes, even though he, uh, he had to do it with a zealot as well. Uh, beautifully making use of that zoning capability of the zealot and just keeping his probes moving back and forth. More gateways being thrown down and a robotics facility this time around. Also getting the sentry for the scouting capabilities that it does provide most likely as well. Have to wait and see. Is that Sentry does do a lot of things actually. Might not just be for the scouting, especially with the robotics facility. I imagine he would just make a observer here. Right? War prism. Alright, never mind. I mean, you can scout with a war prism too. It's absolutely fine. And then while you're scouting, you can just do aggression as well at the same time. Best of both worlds. Uh, Kyo looks like he's going to do the Widowmine drop here. It's taking him a little bit to get these Widowmines out. He actually put a tech lab on the factory uh, to get a Cyclone out first of all. And then started making those uh, those Widowmines. And now, okay, there we go. Going back into Siege Tank production. But uh, you know what? Oh, this is going to be very dangerous actually for Kyo. He did go a little bit greedy there. Going for the quicker base. He has a bunker up. Um, but yeah, a widow mine, a medevac, all marching across the map, and there's a third base coming down as well for Cure. Cure, is it really going to be ready for this aggression coming out of Zest? Zest definitely amping up the aggression, but that it's only three gate and a robo. I mean, that could have been so much worse here. Uh, but already, I'm not even sure if Cure is anywhere near the amount of units that he needs to really defend this. The siege tank is. Put up onto the high ground, which is a nice position. Of course, there's no blink available. Needs to pull a lot of SCVs here to start buffer against the siege tank. Is gonna get targeted down by those stalkers. War prison providing absolutely lovely vision on top of that. All right, look at the HP though of all those stalkers. It was so close. Nine workers did go down. The widow mines did manage to get five kills apparently. But, um, yeah, this is this is going to be the real battle. This, another siege tank is now completed. Siege up on top of that high ground. Right, it looks like Kyur is going to be able to stick around for now. But, oof, oof, needs to get some more damage done potentially with these Wither Mines. All right, lost mining time. That's not too bad. Wants to get this other Wither Mine a little bit closer potentially. Um, yeah, I don't know if... Alright, going for the Stalker instead, retargeting that one. I'd say it's a good choice. Another Widowmine. So, feels like he's a little bit slow with the burrowing of the Widowmine, actually, but maybe that's just me. 
I'm not sure if it mattered that much, but uh, maybe that's just to kind of keep the uh, the probes away for a longer period of time without having to retarget and unburrow burrow. So making uh, full use of the maximum amount of HP before he actually has to burrow. Delaying as much mining time as possible there. Maybe that's the reason why. Anyway. Just, I'm just not good enough to know. Second, well, the third base now flying over again. There is still the second base uh, <laughs> hurt. It still needs a, a couple of more band-aids from the Terran player here. But uh, yeah, under the ever vigilant eye of the siege tank, these uh, or, well, this orbital is gonna be going back at constructing uh, SCVs on the low ground here. As Kier can transfer his SCVs back onwards to that base. Now, Zest doesn't have a third base, of course. This is still a little bit of something that uh, is up in the air. He's just going to put down a lot more gateways. Five more gateways. Going for the charge. Going for the Dark Shrine. And, uh, yeah, looks like he's just going to go for a complete full-on push here. Without much else. I mean, there's three siege tanks available. Oh. There's uh, a couple of stalkers here being chased off by that Banshee. And you know what? Without Blink, but with the charge, ah, it's going to come down. I would love to see a bunker being thrown down here by Cure once again. I'm pretty sure that he is aware of that there's no third base here yet. Uh, um, he just flew over it with that Banshee. So you know what? I feel like you should be a little bit aware of... Scary stuff coming down. All right, this is this is really good actually. Putting down more buildings in front of these siege tanks, uh, especially with the charge being created here, going to be very difficult for this zealot army to get right on top of those siege tanks, and uh, definitely will allow Q to get one or two more volleys in there, and hopefully manage to turn it around. The benches as well, going to be a thorn in the side for Zest there. If they are still on the right side of the map, that is. One of them is... Oh my god, they're just going across right now. I don't think Kier is aware of the amount of units that is coming his way. Oh my god, that <laughs> missile turret here as well. Making life difficult for those zealots. That was a very, very nice little bit of maneuvering. But uh, 27... Oh my god, all the SCVs are dying though. And yeah, that is just not enough stuff for the Terran here. I thought he made a pretty good Sim City. I thought he had enough siege tanks, but uh, no, sir. Zest knows his stuff, and he knows that he would have enough of that situation. And he just kind of, he just kind of kills Cure right then and there. Easy peasy. He makes it look very easy. Uh, no problem whatsoever, actually. It appears, and that's gonna put Zest on match point. Match point already achieved here by Zest. Four to one. Absolutely stellar. Just losing a single one where the triple barracks did its job correctly. And uh, completely blindsided Zest there for quite a while. Uh, Zest even still trying to create his nexus, of course. Getting his gateway uh, depowered. Alright. Nightshade will be game number six here. Yep, game number six. And, uh, yeah, are we still going to see as close to a full wipe as it could be? As well, guys, keep in mind that these games, they would not be possible without our sponsors. I would have to say one more. Well, I mean, we're going to mention them again. Um, because they do obviously help us out a ton. And, uh, you know what? Appreciation is best shown by just talking about them. So... 24 hour fitness, I mean, if you want to do some more fitness, if you feel, you know, a little bit uh, bad, especially in the uh, the winter period of time, right, it's, uh, it's always good to work out, you get that dopamine going in your head and um, helps you out, gets more positive, help you stay focused on the game, so uh, yeah, 24 hour fitness, they have all sorts of great equipment, uh, weight me well weights cardio machines uh studio classes and awesome personal trainers all ready to help you out go check them out guys 24 hour fitness and uh i know that you're not gonna run off to the gym right now so what you could do right now if you still want to support esports and starcraft 2 uh head on over to the Matcherino page it's just above the chat window right there and it will actually uh help us out a ton here if you add the code to the coupon code 
place right there if you press contribute you will be able to contribute a little bit of extra money for absolute free and if you feel like that's not enough there's more stuff you can do yes sir don't be afraid if you feel like you're not doing enough there's always more <laughs> there's always more you can do it's much like starcraft right you feel like you're doing everything you can and then you realize you know what i'm not moving these units I haven't been making workers for an extended period of time. I'm supply blocked. I could do more. It's the same with Machirino. There's always stuff to do there. <laughs> anyway, alright. In... <laughs> In the top left side we have the red Terran player. He is known as a cure. And uh, kind of kind of dominating so far. The blue protos in the bottom right side. He is known as Zest. Alright, enough enough introduction screening uh, with the camera there. Showing off to the uh, the Koreans here. My capable zooming in and panning and uh, rotating the screen skills have, of course, uh, shown themselves. I've proven my capabilities within this area of expertise. As we are waiting for both these players to show their area of expertise. Which is uh, slightly more impressive, I have to admit. Which is sending units to uh, to work, making buildings, and then controlling the army units in a beautiful fashion as well. After realizing what they need to do, reading their opponents. All this great stuff that we love and cherish StarCraft for. Alright, Mr. Reaper boy coming in. Is that actually blocked off? That was crazy. He jumped up here, but then he couldn't move past here. Is that a thing? Really? Okay. Hmm. Well, there you go. There you go. The more you know. The more you know. Um, reactor factory on the way, double gas here for Cure, already established obviously, as well for Zest. Twilight Council is going to be the tech choice this time around, once again. I mean, Zest is an absolute beast with those blink stocks, I would be surprised if it's going to be anything else but that. Um, unless if he goes for the all-in again, but uh, yeah. A two base aggression isn't going to be taking place here, I would assume Zest... Could still do it, but uh, with the Blink Stalkers, usually he just likes to play defensively. And, uh, well, I say defensively. He plays defensively by being aggressive with those Blink Stalkers. It's basically... Okay, there we go. The Reaper does go in here. I got confused. Definitely feels like uh, something might be off with the, uh, the building placement here then, right? Feel like you should be able to get this uh, this blocked off with a gateway, a cybernetic score, and a pylon. It's a lot of stuff to invest in this location if you want to block off a single reaper. Hmm. But, oh well. Anyway, I'm not one to complain. I'm playing Terran. So tech lab on the starport and the factory here as well. Uh, I think we're not going to see the benches this time around. We could, though. We, we still might. But I, I'm feeling it's going to be a raven this time around. I don't know why, but I feel like that would be the uh, the, the choice here. Actually, no. He's just going to remove them. Put uh, the barracks on the tag labs. All right. Yep. That's uh, proving me wrong once again. Making me feel like a, like a doofus. It's what these pro players do. Oh, it's a pretty good hit. Five kills. Not shabby, not shabby. That's a lot of dead probe particles on the ground here. And uh, yeah, the blink stock's just completely out of position to really deal with this. And yeah, that's a nice start to this game, obviously, for Cure Cure. Uh, did he already get Concussive Shell? No, he didn't. He's just getting Stimpak and uh, would like to see Combat Shield as well. There it is. 
Making double Marauder, one double Marine at the same time. There's going to be a big two base aggression. The Observer for Zest is on its way, though, trying to figure this out. Um, it's a little bit out of position, though, to really scout against this. But you know what? No Stalkers there are going to blink into the base, and they are going to see this. It's going to be good enough. All right, more regression with these Widow Mines. Oh, nice retargeting there. Still getting two more workers. Obviously, wouldn't get the, uh, the Stalker as he did have Blink available. And, uh, very nice. Once again, Zest scouting out the main base here for Cure, seeing what's what. And, um, you know, maybe Cure showed a little bit too much of his bio forces, giving away that there is a big attack coming in. Now, as we can see, Zest making a lot of extra gateways here. Adding on two more even after seeing that amount of bio forces. Just wanting to play it safe. And these stocks are buying a lot of time now for Zest as well. Uh, forcing quite a group of those bio forces to just kind of run this down. Even killing off two marines here as well. Very nicely done by Zest again. The blink stalker micro from Zest and just the control of his units is absolutely... It's, it's a joy to see, honestly. It's always a great thing to see. Even as a Terran player, it is uh, it is quite something. Even, look at this, coming around now, taking out the third base. There it is, beautifully, well, cancelled, of course, but uh, still very nice for Zest indeed. Now, this is where the aggression comes in. There has been a drop at the main base as well. Looks like it will be taken out. Actually, Zest just doesn't have the forces. A quick GG out. I, I wasn't ready for that one. I wasn't ready for that one. I guess it was the right choice. I guess it was the right choice. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. He doesn't have to bring every game up until the final conclusion. Uh, but that means we do have uh, one map remaining. Right, that was game number six. Yeah, it's four to two now. So unfortunate for Zest that it happens, you know, uh, when there's only one map left. Weird little bit of drumming boy going on. It was me. It was me. I'm horrible at doing that finger thingamajig. Sometimes I do okay, but this time around it wasn't very good. Anyway, uh, so I'll stop. Um, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting that to end that quickly. Anyway, we're gonna go into game number seven. Uh, game number seven, which will be with still on match point, Mister Zest over here. But you know what? Kind of spoiled it. It's the Red Protoss. He is Zest. And in the top left, we have a blue Tyrant player. He is Cure. Okay. All righty then. Hmm. Hmm. I guess Zest just wasn't aware of that attack coming in quickly enough. Um, did he even make the sentry there as well? Like, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he didn't. And normally you do see him build a sentry just so he can, after hallucination, fly over the Terran base. If he would have seen the three uh, barracks, both of the tech labs being uh, thingamajigs, and seeing that amount of bio forces, it would have put down more defenses earlier on. And uh, been okay, but 
you know, unfortunately for him, didn't manage to pull that one through. And uh, his heavy gateway style actually does appear to have a little bit of a weakness against types of push pushes like those. Um, even with the micro capabilities of Zest, it just wasn't enough, unfortunately. Now there is the second base for Cure going down so far. Looks like a standard stuff once again, except for this little one tiny probe going for a proxy. It would appear like a Stargate proxy on the top side of the map. Which is the thing that would make most sense in this situation. Another base being taken here by Zest as well. Might as well. If cure the impression that everything is absolutely fine. Nothing crazy going on here. And the Reaper marching across. I don't know if he's actually marching or if he's hovering. No, it looks like he's running, isn't it? It's kind of like a Naruto run, but then his hands are forward instead of backwards. It's crazy. It's crazy. I just realized. Anyway. Alright. Ooh, almost getting another probe here. Doesn't want to lose the Reaper. Definitely needs to keep the Reaper alive to scout out on the map what is happening here. Even though it's, you know what, it's still kind of unlikely to really find this, right? It is a very difficult location to scout. And uh, that's a very, very nice proxy location from Zest for that Stargate. It's still very, very close to that main base. But, um, yeah, it's still such a long way for uh, Cure to scout this. I'm not completely sh convinced that he will. And as of, I say that, of course, Cure... Going across the map here, and you know what? Alright, he will. He will scout this. Very nice. But will it be in time? The Oracle already about to pop. Uh, I guess you can start putting a Widow Mine. Where's this Widow Mine? Oh, there it is. Okay, so there is a Widow Mine over here. There he is. There's the little bugger. Can he it, get that little Oracle? Um, well, no, I don't think so. Oracle staying out of range here. Getting on top of a lot of those SCVs. Already a bunch of them going down. We'd like to see a little bit of uh, a pulling away from that Oracle, of course, to lure him into the Widow Mines here, but... It's not happening so far. Full work is going down. And a uh, second Oracle has been produced. A third Oracle is on the way. Zest. Oh, now he's getting very close. Okay. Setting off the Widow Mine, trying to get the... Uh, a lot of SCV is low, so the second Oracle could come in and take the initiative there. After a lot of SCVs dying to that, uh, well, getting low to the uh, to the Widow Mine. Please, boss has been called by Zest. Maybe it wasn't a tactic. It looked like it was. I thought it was pretty smart, in a way. Sacrificing a single Oracle to get all the SCVs low and then just running in with the second one. All right, here we go. Continuing onwards. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe it was uh, some lovely tactics. <laughs> oh, the qu casting quality you expect from me. I think it was pretty good. I think it was planned. That's just me, though. Finally taking out this forward positioning of the uh, the Stargates. There goes the pylon. Boom goes the uh, the empowerment, empowerment of the Stargate. And uh, you know what? This mineral line is pretty... Oh no, actually there's a, there's a Widow Mine. There's a tiny little Widow... Oh yeah, that's... Alright, uh, yeah, that's a hit. And there goes the second Oracle. Oh my dear lord. Everything falling apart now for Zest all of a sudden. Losing two works as well. Where in the world did those workers die? I guess it was here. Mm, maybe. That was a while ago. Alright. Okay. Um, so yeah, overall those uh, those oracles are not really paying for themselves. Only five workers killed. For about three oracles as well. Look at that. That's 450 gas just gone down in... No Man's Land exploded up into dust. Donated to the gas gods. And, uh, yeah, you know, 
Cure is looking to take oh, the opportunity after taking out quite a big portion of the army forces of Zest. He's coming in. There is a cannon here. Smart choice, actually, from Zest to make use of that when he uh, doesn't have as much as he's used to. All right, nice. Well, all right, kill with that uh, with that widow mine. There is another force coming in at the third base, though. It's going to probably be the real troublemaker here. Killing of quite a couple of probes, but... I mean, I'm not even sure if Zest is going to beat this, or at least not very efficient at most. Yeah, that's a lot of works going down. 14 works, even his base might be in trouble here. And the war pins have already taken place at the uh, the main base, most of them. So yeah, this base is in a world of hurt. Looks like it might ooh, get targeted down, I'm not sure. Alright, just going to leave this one. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have gotten it. At least he may have gotten it very low. Maybe come around there again with another group of units. But uh, this time around, just playing it safe. Playing it cool. You know, the medevac is still there. Still available for him to do stuff with. Assessed is trying to transition out of the uh, the bad start that he had. Now the initial bad start of the, the mid-game too. Um... Third base for Cure now being constructed too. And Cure, you know what? He's looking like he might be getting close to tying up this series after all. After being dominated in those earlier games quite heavily. So, making the game seem unlosable for Zest. Uh, suddenly just striking back with a vengeance. Finding the damage. Finding the opportunities that he needed to just... Uh, not allowed us oracles to do too much and uh yeah very well played so far from cure in this game absolutely maybe a little bit fortunate there as well uh that he did have the widow mines in the main base of course the reaper scouting out that situation and gg is gold zest doesn't have the stuff and uh, Cure tie, well not tying up, but getting close to tying up the series here. What a game. That's uh, another weird one. <laughs> another weird one in a way. But uh, yeah, there we go. Map choice once again to Zest. Let's see what will happen with them. As we're waiting for these players. To, uh, well, not both players. We're waiting for Zest particularly for what map he wants to pick. For Pro Series. Alright. Alright. Can he still close it out? I mean, at least Q is kind of making a game out of it now, right? At the start, I really, I really didn't, uh, didn't feel that good, not that great for the chances that uh, that Q had. Honestly, it felt like everything he was trying, whether it was defending aggression, being aggressive, or just, uh, just straight up the normal type of game. Nothing really seemed to be working out that efficiently for him. But, um, you know what? That, those two last games, he was truly making stuff work. Making nice moves. And, um, yeah. Making me very happy. Making me a very happy caster. <laughs> seeing these games. Alright. Anyway, another game. Here we go. Remember, Matt. Guys, we have a Maturino page. If you haven't already, there's a couple of quests maybe that you could do. There's maybe a couple of... Um, well, there's the code, of course, as well. If you haven't already, check it out and go find a place in your heart where you will be able to support <laughs> StarCraft 2 and this Maturino page. Anyway, these guys deserve it, guys. Look at the stuff they've already done. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. Game number, game number eight, actually, already. On match point still, it's the blue Protoss. Maybe uh, maybe choking up a little bit here after getting the, so close to his victory. Just trying to tie it out now. Or tie the knot in the series. 
He is the Blue Protal's Zest. His opponent in the top left. Coming back with a vengeance so far. Can he keep this momentum going? He's the Red Terran player. He is Cure. Okay. Scouting for those proxies. Doesn't want to get proxied again. Smart choice. Let's see what his battle plan will be this time around. Femeron does appear to be one of his favorite maps so far, especially in the TVP matchup. As he's getting ready to plump down that Nexus. There it is. And uh, yeah, there will be the command center as well. So yeah, as standard, as standard comes. Quite safe as well. Going for the cybernetic score first here from Zest. It's a little less greedy, but uh, it's a little bit safer in case there are some proxy barracks across the map somewhere. There is a Reaper on the way or something else like that. There is the Reaper. Coming through. Adapt, of course, will be more than in time to really uh, help out against him. Actually, kind of in the nick of time. But it's fine, you can see when this ramp. There he is. Once again, we're seeing the Twilight Council being the tech of choice from Zest. So, stock is as well in the production tab. I'm expecting another blink play here. And, uh, yeah, let's see if he does go for the sentry here as well. I would love to see a sentry to help out with the, um, the scouting. He doesn't really have to guess count, though, at the moment. Safety bunker as well from Cure here. Going for the tech lab on the factory. And uh, we'll need to see a star port being produced pretty soon, obviously, as well. Actually, no, I'm just going to go for a straight up third base very, very early on. And that is something that you would love to know about being Zest. And, uh, yeah, so far still no sentry being created. He's just going to go for the robotics facility instead. So it looks like he has changed up his style here a little bit. Potentially doesn't feel like he needs to use the sentry, or maybe it's just because he uh, there's something else that the Terran can do right now, which makes him feel that uh, it's not good anymore to use the sentry there as a scouting tool. Maybe it will make you vulnerable to a couple of other things, getting a sentry out that early on, and uh, maybe delaying either an observer or a, uh, a blink, a blink upgrade. You know what? I can't get behind anything Zest does. He does for a reason. And usually those reasons are uh, a heck of a lot better than anything I can come up with. Alright, yeah. We are looking at kind of a similar build from uh, Cure here. Once again, he is going to go for the heavy bio force. Still no starport in sight here. Engineering base being constructed, but uh, let me double check that actually. Yeah, there's not a single star port anywhere. The Reaper also trying to figure out what is happening. Hasn't scouted this third base yet. Would be a nice little bit of knowledge for him. Uh, you know what? This is quite a hefty force of Starkers. There's only a single siege tank. It might be picked off here by those uh, conniving looking... People in uh, walking tanks, which are the Protoss units. The decapitated head squad. There they go. Jumping in right on top of the Cyclone, immediately taken out. Siege tank being forced to reposition here. As Kier is trying to get himself in a reasonable position to start dealing with this. Alright, almost killing off one Stalker there. 
And uh, yeah, Zest just rotating around. There is a bunker here to help out this, uh, this natural base. But Zest is aware now that there is a third base already having been constructed. Although even though that third base for Cure was so incredibly quick, uh, Zest is third base still e earlier here with the uh, the overall overall mining being saturated there quite a bit earlier. As Cure still has to find a way to get rid of these stalkers here. Oh, there is a siege tank being blunk on top of right here, right now. All right, that's a good maneuver. This blink stalk is actually going to be able to take down quite a couple of SEVs as well. Actually, he's going forward further into the base, realizing there's still a clump of marine marauder right there. And uh, taking out as many SEVs as possible before retreating out of there. And there we go. A nice little bit of play from Zest using those blink stalkers as he does. As he's so well known for. We are seeing more barracks making the, uh, the attack lab and a reactor. And finally, there are Metavex on the way here. Stim has to be used with extreme caution so far. Uh, up until this point, now that there's finally two Metavex out, he can be a little bit more liberal and actually start using that Stim pack, of course, but... Up until this point, he couldn't really use him that much to try and chase down the Stalkers, because that would put his Bioforce in such a depleted uh, position, HP-wise. And uh, just be absolutely horrible as well, of course. And a nice little interception once again from Zest, I'd say. Is he gonna have enough units this time around? There's no second drop anywhere. Alright, nice blinking away further. Out of range of those Widowmines, forcing them to set up shop. Quite far away, actually. Healing up the bioforces. There we go. That's nice. As much as possible. You want to have all the HP points in the world that you can have. And, oh, nicely picked off one of the Widow Mines there. It's going to help out quite a bit here for Zest. And, uh, oh, Cure actually getting Zest to force the, uh, the shield here. The Guardian shield. Nicely done there. Wasting a little bit of energy on that sentry as more reinforcements is coming in for Cure. So Cure is going to wait for the rest of the uh, the forces to join in here, probably before really pushing in. Zest still on hold position with the Zealots, with those Immortals too. As he finally has his Robotics Bay, the Robotic Support Bay getting ready so he can start making those Colossi, but will he be in time? No. The Bioforce right on top of all the Zealots. The Zealots are melting absolutely incredibly quickly. Nice little bit of micro. Oh, the Widowmine's not really getting great connections. Though. There's still Immortals and a bunch of Stalkers left. More Zealots being warped in. A nice blink away to allow those Zealots right on top of the Bioforces. Needs to get rid of that Widowmine. He does, actually. And so far, I mean, Zestis army supply is dwindling. 74 versus only 50. For Zest right now, as more bio is marching across, getting closer and closer here. And Zest is getting in a little bit of trouble. He does have a single... Does he have a single Colossus now? Yes, he does. All right, where is it? It's still over here. Needs to get that to the front. Needs to get it to the... Uh, the actual line of defense here. There he goes. Waddling its way over. And now it looks like Zest has the units that he kind of needs against this. As long as he kills off these Widow Mines again without taking too many losses. Yeah, there we go. Very nicely done there by Zest. Being able to force Cure backwards again. Very patient play. Uh, very careful play as well. Just taking the trades that he can with those Blink Stalkers. Being as efficient as he possibly can be. And... Uh, yeah, now with the Colossus out, of course, Cure is going to have to find another way of attacking. But, uh, you know what, it put the pressure on Zest quite a bit. Zest not really being able to get that fourth base constructed for quite a long time. And that might buy Cure the opportunity here to start doing some multi-pronged aggression as well. Now that this is being constructed, I mean... Oh, getting on top of the Colossus though. One of them does get taken out. Nice trade there for Cure. Not that many stocks to chase down these Mender effects either. As Cure is looking to do more multi-pronged harassment. Once again, there is a 
cannon here. And a big warp in of zealots as well taking place. That should stop this Bioforce from dropping here. Kyo shouldn't come... Well, actually, no, he's proving me wrong. A lot of the zealots not moving in. Yes, the marine marauder ball was dropping here. The middle mine. Okay, there we go. You know what, Seth probably didn't want to get hit by those Widow Mines as much. So maybe that's why he was waiting for those Zealots to move in. Or at least some of them. Definitely looked like he uh, he did that on purpose. Just trying to set off those Widow Mines. So quite a lot of Zealots getting killed there. But overall still, Zest, yeah, he's looking okay on the unit's lost tab. Trading out favorably. As both of these players now having secured their fourth base. Cure is on 200 supply though against 155 right now. That's a very significant worker lead. Needs to get the, his workers uh, mining as efficiently as possible. Let's take a look at where all those workers are. There is six works over here though as well. Not doing too much. And we're getting liberates a range and more liberators on the way here for Cure. Getting ready for it. Three pronged attack here, it seems. Medivax on the right, Medivax on the left, and a big ball of bio. Well, I say bake a reasonable ball of bio in the middle bit of the map here. Skir is getting ready to start. He's just being safe now, I guess. As soon as Zest tries to move out, as soon as Zest tries to take another base, I imagine that Cure will jump on the opportunity to try and get some damage done anywhere. Uh, but up until that time, there's, you know what, no real good reason for him to try and get him, force himself in there into the Protoss army and uh, potentially trade out unfavorably. I mean, getting called out a little bit out of position here, perhaps. Still taking out quite a couple of those uh, Stalkers with him, though. Seeing that those stocks are there and uh, it's going to be the go sign though for this drop on the left side. We'd like to see the uh, the drop on the right side going at the same time. But now there is two cannons available here. So not sure if that is the best choice anymore. War Prism as well. Actually was doing a little bit of damage here. Maybe getting uh, bullied away by those liberators. It is still, f well, actually near full HP. Is that for it? I think it is actually. Hmm. Alright, uh, Kyo. Getting his ghosts out now too. He's making three command centers at the same time. Beautiful feedbacks here on those Medivacs. But the drop is still pretty strong. Killing off three high Templar. And, uh, probably wants to retreat though. But no, not anymore. Nice blink right on top as quickly as he could. Still trading out pretty alright though. Is Kyo. I think that's just everything he needs to do at this time period. I mean, killing off all those uh, High Templar, killing off quite a bunch of these Stalkers too. Army supply is still pretty favorable here, Fulkia. And uh, yeah, as long as he trades out reasonably well and gets those, uh, those Liberators and high, uh, Ghosts up, I think he's in a very good position to, to tie up the series here. And we might be going into game number nine. You know what, but uh, I mean, I don't want to call it yet, because still a lot of stuff could happen for Zest's favor here. And then suddenly everything turns around, of course, that is uh, kind of part of the, the game, but... I mean, so far I'm really liking Cure's position. Stargates are being constructed, three Stargates uh, in total, is that three? Yeah, it's three in total with the Fleet Beacon as well. That's so many Liberators. That's maybe one problem here for Cure. He only has four Medivax now. So that kind of puts a, a dent in his capabilities of doing the multi prompt aggression. Here's the other two. He can still kind of do a similar thing, right, with the Liberators. Oh, nice feedbacks there. And Storms too. Killing off quite a couple of the ghosts for the, uh, the two High Templar there. I think he traded out reasonably okay, but oh my god, those storms though, hitting the bio so incredibly much. And that bio is going to have a hard time healing up again. There's Dark Templar right on top of the forces. There's also a Warp Prism in the main base here for Cure. Everything is going to ham and a biscuit very quickly here. As both these players are just unleashing 
their fury upon one another. The Liberators making it impossible for Zest to move in on this natural base. He does lose it. But at the same time, look at that. A lot of uh, Dark Templar zealots. Everything right on top of the production of Cure. Uh, Cure did kill 23 workers here. Zest only on 41 right now. And does manage to save most of his production. Uh, but you know what? Zest not done yet. The War Prism has been taken out. There's still more Zealots and more Dark Templar available. As Cure is trying his best to keep as much alive of the aggression as well. Ten workers going down here, but you know what? Overall, still, uh, it feels like a favorable trade in favorable overall engagements for Cure. Once again. As Zest is trying to make that transition into some sort of an Air Force. I'm not sure if he has the economy truly anymore. Especially after losing that natural base here. Even though he only had the uh, the four mineral patches. This is still quite a bit of gas. That's like 2k gas that he uh, could have used quite nicely. It's actually not that much gas left there either. But still. That's the important part for his Stargate units of course. That gas that he needs to start producing from these uh, from these Stargates. Get the Tempest out to help out against those Liberators. Kill those off from afar and... Ooh, Kjö! <laughs> oh, look at that! A real nuke is on the way here. And as these two Liberators are trying to get themselves into a favorable position to try and put more aggression on the army of Zest. They get things even more difficult. Ah, getting the Archon there for this Bioforce. Oh, the Tempest though. The Tempest is here. Should be able to not allow the uh, the Medivac to escape. The Blink Stalk is not blinking away quickly enough. The Liberated here it has been dealt with though. So, not losing too many probes there. But there is, of course, still this drop going down. Uh, the Nuke is available. The nuke is available. Alright, there is a big Siege up on this fourth base. Zest. Actually, alright, I mean, in it comes, oh, that's a ghost from behind, I don't think Zest saw this, are oh, we gonna see this happen actually, are oh, we gonna see this land, he's trying so hard, no, he left before it, no, alright, oh well, ah, uh, Kyo tying up the series here, 4-4, four four. Zest in trouble now, um, yeah, Kyo definitely just, um, it's like he just started playing uh, all of a sudden, unleashing everything he has, and uh, managing to tie up the series again. Zest now on match points, one more game to go. Either way, whichever way it goes, Zest does have map choice though. So let's see what he will go for as a final pick. Here we go. Let's see. I'm curious to see what he decides to go for as I misclick my way through the menus and have to leave the arcade again <laughs> or leave the uh, arcade chat. Uh, World of Sleepers will be the choice here for Zest. All right. It's his choice, guys. It is his map to play right now. Actually, I've been seeing more uh, Protoss and Terran. Picking World of Sleepers recently. Um, not really in the ZVT or ZVP though, to be fair. But mostly in the um, the TVT, the PVP or the TVP. Did I invite Zest? I don't know if I did. Let's get him in here anyway, regardless. There we go. Zest should be in the gaming seat. There it is. Alright. Remember guys... We wouldn't be here without our lovely sponsors either. One of them is GameStop. And uh, that should be your top destination for uh, gaming requirements. If you want to increase your performance and uh, get every tiny little advantage that you can get with your gear, then go check out GameStop.com slash high performance and they will have everything you need. Uh, for, ranging from controllers, mice, keyboards, really uh, top headsets as well, of course. 
anything you need to help you win your game. So go get that competitive advantage at GameStop.com slash high performance. All right, that being said, let's hop into this final game between these two absolute beasts. That somehow, someway, having tied up the series, it's this blue Terran right here. Things were looking hopeless. They were looking dire as they can be. But somehow, someway, fighting his way back. And now, as well, on the match point, he is Cure. And in the bottom left, his opponent. He is Rad. He is Protoss. He is the best. He is Zest. Steaming bull. No, it looks like it's a bull, kind of in a way, right? With tiny horns. But it's a zealot, in fact, so. I'm pretty sure it is, at least. So it's just a Protoss face, I suppose. It's not really a zealot, is it? It's just. It's just a Protoss face. I'm being, uh, being a little bit. Uh, I wouldn't say racist, but. Uh, how do you call this? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'm Dutch. I have excuses. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's see what they're up to this time around. No big three proxy racks taking place for Cure this time around. I wonder if Zest just kind of picked World of Sleepers because he wants to go for a longer game here, right? Um, World of Sleepers is one of the bigger macro maps and uh, easier to scout things. He has more time focus to do stuff right if uh cure tries to move out with a big push across the map zest has a little bit of extra time maybe to make something work with his stalker so maybe that is why he favors a map like this uh which is kind of interesting because ephemeron the other map that he favors kind of doesn't have that in my opinion it's a little bit shorter range of course uh, there's some bigger maps in the map pool that he could have chosen from and that's where he went for the uh, the Blink Stalker. So let's see what he goes for this time around. I'm very curious to see. He might just go for another round of Stargate. We have him spin seeing him do that as well. And uh, no, actually, I was wrong in both cases. He's going for the Robo Facility this time around. For his final game, he's throwing down the Robo. Which, uh, yeah, completely out of range for that Reaper. Reaper not managing to jump over that pylon, unfortunately. Needs to go back to ninja school there. Explosive ninja school. To relearn how to jump over a pylon using a grenade. As he is just getting a reactor and a factory. Looks like the cookie cutter Terran build so far. Going for the Widowmine drop. And uh, Zest, yeah, I'm kind of interested in seeing what his follow-up will be with the robotics facility. Is he just going to go for a pressure with the three racks and, uh, or I mean, two, three gates and a robo? That could be, but he is making an observer first here. So maybe just wants to play it safe, wants to know what Cure is up to using those observers. And then afterwards, um, just go into whatever he feels is necessary. Maybe a little bit more of a reactive playstyle this time around. What we're seeing from Zest. Oh, actually, a very quick robotics bay being thrown down here. Could be a quick Colossus build as well. And uh, yeah, let's see what Cure will do against this so far. There we go. All right, another barracks being thrown down. It could be that he's going to put down another barracks, put down two tech labs here, and just go for that similar build that we saw on uh, Simulumu Roku. Simulululu. And those are two tech labs. Yeah, there's another barracks coming down. So far, ooh, the uh, Medifact did get scouted out by the Observer. So let's see a couple more Stalkers being warped in. Zest is going crazy on the Observers, actually. This is his fourth Observer already. And we're only at 4 minutes, 18, 20, actually. I mean, okay. I mean, he just wants to know what's happening here. He wants to have a full vision of what Cure is doing. He doesn't have Blink, so he really has to be completely aware of the movement of this Medivac as quickly as possible. All right, there he goes. A nice interception so far. Getting rid of that uh, Widow Mine carrying ship. But the Widow Mines are still here. Ooh. Unlucky. Does still lose the two units, but... I mean, that could have been a lot worse, right? That was, um, yeah, it wasn't as clean as it could have been, but overall, 
It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Could have been worse. Uh, didn't really take any economic damage. Just losing a, two gateway units. And he did kill the medevac. He did kill all the widow mines as well. Quite nicely done there. I'd say still quite favorable for Zest, of course. But uh, it's kind of scary to realize that he could have done that even cleaner than he did there. And uh, shot that down even harder than he did. All right, and the Colossus should be a good follow-up here as well with this amount of bio. That's a lot of Marines here. Extended Thermal Lands. Uh, I would love to see a couple of Kronos going down on this bad boy. So he gets that as quickly as possible. Although I'm not completely convinced that Zest is aware of this uh, build. Oh, actually he is. He saw this being produced here. So if he had paid attention to the previous time around that they played, he should know that this is coming his way. Throwing down two extra gateways, four extra gateways to help out these situations. Five extra gateways. Ah, 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 five extra gateways. To help out this situation, wants to get as many war pins as possible available for him. As he knows that there is a big bio force coming his way pretty soon. Oh my god, are you joking? Oh, look, <laughs> you're, you're quite unlucky with this one, buddy. Not being able to see the observer there. All right, I mean, he's just going to go with the uh, the single medevac so far. Having a siege check at his front door as well. You know what? He's not going for the aggression that I thought he would. Maybe because it was, of course, that his, um, his medevac drop with the Widow Mines didn't really get much done here. And uh, Zest, yeah, I mean, he was completely aware of what was happening. He was so... He was looking at it. And, uh, yeah, another great interception taking place there. Cure not being vigilant enough with that medevac. And, uh, yeah, that must feel kind of sad news bears for Cure here. Being, uh, you know, down two drops without really killing a single, a single probe whatsoever yet. Forge going down as well. There's the second forge. Uh, it's being constructed, I believe. Right? Yeah, okay. It is. Oh, I can just see them there. Mm, okay. Okay. Cure not out of this yet, though, of course. Uh, still some stuff that could turn out into his favor. And then suddenly the game it could be on equal footing again. But definitely Zest making the dream place so far. Uh, been ahead for quite a while on that uh, economic advantage there, as we can see. Uh, three Colossus now on the field as well. Siege tanks are pretty good against Colossus, to be fair. They aren't good at targeting them down. The splash damage helps out against the Colossus and everything that's underneath it as well, of course. So, overall, you know what? It's okay. Uh, I've heard TY say a couple of times, if the Protoss is just playing really defensively and he's making Colossus, you should just start building tanks and play defensively yourself as well. You don't have to suicide yourself into the Colossus army over and over again and just try to get the technology tree up and rolling that you need. That was previous patch though, so who knows? That might have changed already. Anyway... Dark Shrine on the way too, as uh, Storm Upgrade is about to finish up here. Ghost Academy also being thrown into the mix. There's another base is being constructed for Cure. The fourth base already almost about to finish up here for Zest. Going completely uncontested so far. Plus two, plus two. Also started now for Cure. I want to have a keep an eye out on uh, the army. See if it tries to make anything happen within that short opportunity there where he has plus two, plus two. Yeah, Zest only has the, uh, the well, I guess, uh, it's not going to be a really big one, is it? Already starting this, plus two, two. Plus two, two. A nice little bit of dropping, actually. At the same time, coming in with his forces, this could end very quickly, actually. Oh my dear lord, the siege tanks. I mean, it's a nice line, but they're out of position for how Zest decided to come in here. There's still War Prism available for War Pins in the main base that could do more economic damage. The Colossus shouldn't move forwards in this. It can maybe potentially just move forwards here. Alright, getting more units into the main base as well. Those are... No, there's not Dark Templars. 
He does have the Dark Shrine. He would have been able to do it. So a lot of scans going down so far for Cure. I'm not sure if he has that many remaining still. Oh, Cure still getting on top of the Colossi too. Falling once more. And I think Cure may have just barely enough units to hold on in this situation. The Wipers and Micro is coming through as well though. And uh, you know what? Overall, only five workers, miraculously, only five workers have gone down. A immortal wailing away at that place over here as well. But uh, yeah, the main base of Cure has gone to shambles. He lost the refinery. He lost his upgrade facilities as well. Actually, no, he just lost one of the uh, the armory. Now I'm losing the singular uh, engineering bay as well. Unfortunately for him, it is the more important uh, weapons upgrade for the Terran here that has been taken out. So. It's going to be quite a delay, actually. Uh, quite a very, very significant delay. And uh, back come the SEVs, who are now ready to start mining. But you know what? Zest is like, <laughs> I knew you would do this. Here I'm back again and uh, get ready to deal with wave number two. As you see, it's quite a big force over here in the main base. May I try to do another push at the front? No. No, scratch that. Just chilling so far. Dark Templar coming through this time though, right in the mix of these bio forces. Is he trying to get on top of the siege tanks? I think he might. No, actually, just gonna go for the uh, SCVs. One scan coming down over here. Second scan not taking place just yet in that other base, but you know what? Zest is making him lose focus. Look at that. As uh, Kyo is losing focus on his mineral line, every single one of the uh, units is going down in that third base. And Zest is looking quite dominant now. Does appear to have the forces. The bio forces are low. And Zest manages to seal the deal, take the series in the end. Things got a lot closer than he probably wanted them to get. He was uh, up 4 to 1 for quite a while there in Cure. Somehow, some way, managing to tie up the series, make it a bit of a game still. But uh, yeah, congratulations to, congratulations to Zest. Very well played there. Doing a marvelous job and uh, <laughs> getting finishing off the series finally. Um, looking very dominant early on. A little bit less so later on. But uh, yeah, still we were seeing nice maneuvers from Zest, of course. Unfortunately, uh, Volkjur didn't manage to get it there in the end. And uh, I'm going to congratulate our players for the games. All right. So that means, everybody, that was is going to be it. Uh, Zest being victorious in this one. Still managing to uh, to get it over with uh, in favor for him. Uh, big push indeed. Very, very nicely played. Being very patient as well. I have to say, right, removing the... Uh, well, moving back from the front line with his units in time. The siege tanks maybe a little bit out of position for Cure. Not fully aware of the army movement of uh, Zest. Which, I have to admit, is quite difficult, of course. Um... Uh, Five, four. Right. Kyo was a little bit confused. He was like, did it end? Was that it? Is this uh, going to be it? Let me just double check. So we started off on Eternal Empire. Zest took that one. Then we went to Zen. Zest took that one too. Then we went to Triton. Zest took that one too. Then we went to World of Sleepers. Cure managing to get one on the board. Then we went to Ephemeron, um, which I believe was another win for Zest, right? Yeah, it was. And then afterwards, we looked at three victories for Cure on Nightshade, Sim Simulacrum, uh, Ephemeron. And uh, then in the final game, number nine, we had World of Sleepers. So that is indeed it. GG's all around. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to our sponsors. This is the final moment in time where I can uh, point to you guys to the uh, Metrorino page as well, of course. Hope that one works out for you. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. And we will be back with more games at a later point, of course. We always will. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you so much for watching once again. Bye-bye. I'm out. I'm gone. Bye-bye. <laughs>